Go forth now, Watcher, as my herald. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, you will have the power to reveal the souls that cling to you. To open the gateway from the in-between to the waking world. Find Aethys. Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. With a quick gesture of her hand, you feel a sharp pain in what would be your chest. The pain continues, intruding deeper into your soul. Looking down, you see a small lump of darkness roiling within you. The darkness lingers there, but the pain abates and fades entirely within the span of a few seconds. A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me. I trust it will not come to that. Her gauntleted hand gestures to the dwarf, hovering nearby. The dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door. Okay. The return to your body feels like waking after a fitful drunken sleep. The rocking of the ship sends pain jolting through your limbs. Crashing waves hammer inside your skull. Adair watches over your body with a glazed look, taking long, even tokes from his pipe. At the first movement of your chest, he starts. His gasp, mid-puff, sends him coughing and straining for breath. No, there's no way. You're awake. What are you doing awake? How are you feeling? Hmm. Mystic. Philosopher. Uh, let's go with six. Weak, but I'm sure it'll pass. Sure. You've been out a long time. I hate to cast a pall over your recovery. But I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. The voice echoes from inside the bust. The remains of the steward of Cad Nua. Cad Nua has been destroyed. Aethus possessed the statue of Maros Nua and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all nearby. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survived. And even then, just barely. The further Aethus withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him to the Deadfire Archipelago. Archipelago. I know not how, but it seems he has retained a piece of your soul. And proximity to it has brought you back. Remain silent. Misfortunes brewing topside, we... Magrans fires the captain stirs. An older man with ale-sour breath rubs his bloodshot eyes and stares at you. Engrim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. Now what's this about? Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, captain. I know this is asking a lot, but you better arm yourself and get on deck. Should be some gear in there. He indicates a nearby wardrobe. 
Okay. All right. Now make some use of it. Tutorial, yes please. If you click on an item in your inventory to pick it up, you can place it in any of the highlighted slot to equip it. You can also double click the items to automatically equip them. That's, that's kind of awkward. Um, guess that goes there. Okay. I guess that's what I'm dealing with here. The pirates of Deadfire are notorious. I suggest you deal with them quickly. a little bit bigger. Okay, so I can use that. If we don't get out there now, we'll have lost by the time we do. All right, simmer down, G. Well, what have we here? A little sloop? Lost and alone in the storm? Oh, and that's where the voice acting ends for the narration. Uh, a surly, brutish-looking captain stands stiff-backed before his crew. He scowls as he assesses you, his hair whipping about his ears in the wind. I'll be taking your ship now, if you don't mind. And especially if you do. Well, at least he asked. I am a gentleman of fortune. Captain shrugs in his cheating rain before pinning you with a slow murderous grin give her up easy and i'll see you get a swift death it'll be bloody and agonizing sure but at least it'd be quick right, so aristocat and from there let's see I like five. The storm is pretty loud. Did you say you're surrendering? How strange. And then he's going to wear his breeches on his head and dance for us? Did I hear that right? Uh, you have gained a reputation in a disposition. Dispositions represent how people perceive your personality throughout the world. Even seemingly nasty reputations will be favored by some people, and benign reputations sometimes bring out the worst in certain people. No disposition is inherently good or bad in Pillars of Eternity, too. Uh, to see icons for the effects of decisions on a disposition, enable the show personality reputation option and difficulty settings. Uh, I might do that. Aye, but the breaches are going to be stitched from your skin. You got a smart mouth on ya. Careful. It'll get you killed faster than any blade. He grins to show crooked teeth. Listen up, mates. He cracks his neck as he addresses his crew. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. One with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Don't damage the sloop when you take it. Play with the crew if you'd like. But don't bring me any prisoners. None that are alive. You had Benwick! Oh. Uh... <laughs> How do I play this game? Okay. So, do I have to do that? How do I chant? All right. Characters with a red selection circle are hostile to you to attack an enemy with your currently equipped weapon, click their selection circle. You can also select the sword button in the lower center of the screen to put the cursor to the attack state. Allow you to attack anyone, even friendly characters.
I'm chanting. Why? Okay. Uh, I'm about to die. <laughs> I defeated the pirates? I, I don't think I did. Uh, you've defeated the pirates, but you're not out of trouble yet. The storm picks up, lashing your ship and driving you dangerously close to a rocky shore. The Defiance crew hurries to reduce sail and batten down the hatches. It worked quickly, but the ship is still listing heavily. Just then, a loose crate tumbles toward you, gathering, sp gathering speed on the rain-slick deck. It misses you, but knocks Judupek, one of your deckhands, off his feet. The Defiant heaves. Judupek pitches over the side. He grabs onto the rail, but his fingers are slipping. He cries out for help. Meanwhile, the runway crate totters to the edge of the deck, ready to plunge overboard. You recognize the symbol on the front and realize it likely contains salvage from Kay Denua, your keep. Let's rescue uh, Tutapek. You grab Tutapek's arm just as the grip fails. For a tense moment, he hangs suspended over the roiling sea. Then, with a mighty tug, you pull him back onto the deck. You hear the heavy splash. The crate from Cade Nua is gone. Judapek, meanwhile, nods in gratitude and hurries to his station. Meanwhile, the storm has nearly driven you ashore. A flash of lightning reveals a treacherous coastline and Eothis striding into the distance. You look barely... Uh, the lookout barely has time to shout a warning before the Defiant runs aground. The impact hurls you from the deck and onto a froth of waves, body, uh, waves, bodies, and splintering debris. You, you struggle towards the sea just ahead, even as the surf tugs you toward the open sea. You kick and paddle with all your might until you, at last you feel sand between your fingers. Paddling yourself ashore, you collapse. I ate all of it, instead of just some of it. Seek out a means of repairing your ship. Oh, I thought that was me on the other side. Uh, you've been getting a lot of sleep so far on this trip. I'd awoke you, but you look so peaceful with your face in the sand. Edder runs his fingers through his hair and removes a strand of seaweed he finds lodged there. He examines it closely and then tosses it into the sand. If you're worried about the ship, you can stop worrying. It's wrecked right over there. He points out the Defiant, despite it being difficult to miss from your vantage point. So far, it's just you and me and the chair lady over there. Edder nods towards something further up the beach. It's a relief to see you awake, my lord. I worried you were in for another long sleep. Your steward appears to be lodged between some rocks. Despite this, her tone is warmly cheerful. Uh, where are we? Don't know, but it's real pretty. Difficult to say for certain. The dead fire is spotted with islands, some quite small. The good news is that if the storm hasn't spun us round entirely, I'd say we're in charted waters. I believe the Valian Trading Company operates in the region. Hence that little visit from that wretched pirate captain. Uh Can we patch up the ship? I'm afraid I won't be much assistance in that regard. And not to doubt Master Adair's capacity, but even he would need supplies. That's true. Steak especially. Patching the hull is only the start. You're going to need help getting the Defiant out to sea again. And a crew, for that matter. Let's see about the other survivors. And somehow we gotta get the ship repaired. I don't wanna be paddling out of here on a salvage raft. For now, I'd say your best bet is to find some sign of civilization. If nothing else, we may be able to hire on a shipwright. My lord, if it is not too taxing, could you explain how it came to pass that you were returned to us? Hmm. Let's 
Let's go with one. My soul passed into the beyond and Brath gave me a choice. Find Eothis or die. These gods. You make one deal with them to stop a madman and the next thing you know they're threatening your soul. That isn't much of a choice. But castle or no castle, you are still my lord and I will aid you to the best of my ability. Uh, as you receive quests, your journal will update with relevant information. If you are ever stuck, open it to review your notes by pressing the journal button in the lower center of the screen or the J key. Some of the quests you receive may be challenging until your character has achieved a higher level. A quest that is beyond your character's current level will be marked in your journal with one, two, or three skulls, one for every level. If your quest has more than three levels above your character's current level, then the skulls will appear red. Well, I suppose we better get a move on. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Uh, to select a party member, click on their selection circle or portrait, or press the number button that corresponds with their position in the party, starting with one at the left. To select multiple party members, click and hold anywhere on the screen and then drag the marquee over the circle over the circles of the party member you'd like to include. To select the entire party base, or the entire party, press the button in the lower center of the screen and or hit the backspace key. Um, we're gonna have this guy be a fighter. And it looks like I was correct in that we cannot get subclasses for our dudes. So it's a good thing I went with Chanter Maybe. Let's go with fighter. Okay, so I ran into some, some crazy issues here. I have no idea how to fight. Alright, if you'd like your party members to perform actions automatically in combat, you can select AI behaviors for them. Each class has, a multiple, has multiple behaviors to choose from based on different roles they can fulfill. You also have the ability to fully customize or create new behaviors by opening the behavior editor. Okay. So can I... Yeah, I don't I don't know what I'm doing. What I want to do is get my summon spells actually do stuff. We're just going to accept this for now. Tell me what that is. Edit chance. When you have a chanter selected, clicking on the whatever on the hot bar will allow you to create chants. Chants are the battle songs chanters use to strengthen their friends and diminish their foes. Clicking on a chant will show the phrases it uses. Phrases selected on the left panel will be added to the select chant. Remove a phrase, just click on it. An active chant will automatically play throughout each phrase in order and then loop back to the beginning when it reaches the end. 
Okay. All right. I'll have this. Help! Somebody! Blanca! Grab all of that. Easy now. I don't see like a loot button or anything like that. Course. Hope the rest of those sodden bastards. Can't loot that person. So many souls lost. Surely someone else. Fine is looking far worse for wear after its unexpected landfall. The hull has splintered in several places along the keel, while the tattered sails stand as evidence of your battle with the pirates. The deck of the Defiant is well out of reach from here. The ship groans like a beached whale each time the waves roll in, but it doesn't seem to be listing further. You may be able to climb up. Uh, you, the grappling hook and the rope? One good throw and the, the hook sails up over the rail, catching firmly. A few tugs suggest that the grappling hook should hold fast. Let's go on up. The rope makes the ascent considerably easier, and you soon find yourself climbing up over the rail. You're looking better, Casita. That or I'm worse off than I thought. <laughs> The sheen of sweat on her brow and the wan cast to her features belies Irina's casual greeting. It's my leg, Matiko. It hurts even worse than it looks. Irina's leg bears a bloody gouge along the length of her shin, and the swelling around her knee suggests a nasty break. Uh, what happened? I was a stubborn Postenaga. I was trying to fasten this mess down when we struck shore. Barrel rolled right over my leg. <laughs> Everything we've been through and I'm nearly done in by a cask of rum. <laughs> Have you seen anyone else? Funny thing, it's hard to see much from the underside of the barrel. I'll be back. Hmm? Of course. You talk to her? If you get a chance, Casita, I'm not going anywhere. It's my leg, Matiko. It hurts even worse than it looks. Uh, we'll craft a splint from some debris. I'll patch you up as best I can, but you'll want to stay off the leg as much as possible. I wasn't planning on going for a run, Casita. Rina watches you work with obvious relief. Once you're through, she gives the leg a tentative stretch. Ah, it still hurts, but I can manage from here. Agrasima, have you found any of the others yet? Not yet. I'll start a fire. If any of the others are out there, hopefully they'll see it and turn up. Ray. What do you need? I'll take care of this. Uh, from the prow, the sandbar below seems deceptively close. Climb down. Hmm? Uh-huh. Yes? Suey. Oh. It's a piggy! Suey. Um, all characters in the game have four defenses against attacks. Deflection, Fortitude, Reflex, and Will. These defenses are based on their attributes level, 
items, and other effects. The more powerful the character, the higher their defenses will be, and the harder they will be to hit or affect with abilities. The attack roll is a random number between 1 and 100 to which is added to the difference between the attack's accuracy and the targeted defense. Can I actually mouse over these? Uh, if accuracy is less than the defense, the attack roll suffers a penalty. If accuracy is greater than a defense, the attack roll gains a bonus. A higher final attack roll is always better. 0 to 24 miss, 24 to 49 graze, 50 to 99 hit, 100 plus crit. A miss has no effect, a hit has the standard listed effect, a graze does less damage and has a shorter duration for effects, a crit does more damage, has higher penetration and a longer duration for effects. Okay. Well, you. Go kill him. You. Start chanting, I guess. No, summon dudes. What do you need? Uh -huh. Charge! You gotta be oh, careful. Okay. Well, these skeletons. Okay, why is it pausing every time I take damage? There we go. Guess I was just pressing the wrong button. My guy's not really doing anything. Combat's going to be a little tough to get used to here. Indeed. Hey, fancy seeing you here. Spirit's voice warps and shifts, muted as if by a great distance. Even so, he grins brightly at you. I can't see much of anything, really, apart from you. Just endless gray. What happened? Um, the ship ran aground in the storm. You died. Storm? That's strange. You'd think a man would recall a storm. It's like, it's like someone cut away a part of my memory. There's just this big black hole. It's weird. I thought death would be different. Big light and so on. But I don't see anything at all. Just you. Wrath charged me with guiding souls to the afterlife, so I suppose you're my responsibility now. Oh. Suppose that sounds nice enough. I'll follow you then, shall I? Come along then. Spirit falls into step behind you, radiating cheer. Still seeing ghosts, huh? I suppose you're stuck with that. Um... I'm here. Of course. Three. Orioles. Each character has their own ability bar that holds all of their active abilities, including spells, powers, evocations, etc. To use an ability, click it. <laughs> Some abilities automatically target the user, but most require you to specify a target by clicking it or clicking on it. Some abilities target an area of effect. The most common area of effect is a circle. If your area of effect is displayed as two circles, one larger than the other, friendly characters caught in the margin between the circles will never be harmed by it. There's always a safe zone. There needs to be a picture showing that. Most abilities draw power from a resource unique to each character class. Barbarian, fighter, monk, paladin, ranger, and rogue abilities draw from a pool that is full at the start of every combat. 
Each ability subtracts a cost from that resource until it is entirely exhausted. Unlike barbarians and fighters, druids, priests, and wizards do not have a common resource pool for all of their abilities. Instead, in each fight, they can cast a number of spells from each spell level they have access to. Chanters, ciphers, and monks start with a fraction of their total resource pool and must build up, build it up over time each fight. Each class gains their resource in a different way. Unlike all other classes, they can continue to replenish the resources throughout a fight. For you, I want to summon skeletons. All right, they're attacking automatically. Yeah, I turned on that. Indeed. Yes. I'll help. Um. Here we got inventory. What are you use? A saber. Grant's Dawn's Pledge. All right, let's equip that. And a small shield. Same thing. Medium shield. Okay. Suits me. Don't you think? Hmm? Of course. Of course. The, like flowers over here. Hmm? I shall. Yes. Hmm? Of course. Spy, Magran here. My flame burns yet. Is that ye? Eld Ingram appears to be in sound condition, although his wax jacket is soaked through. He appraises you with bleary-eyed amusement. You woke just in time for the fun. Fighting off motherless raiders one moment, flung into the freezing depths of Ondra's bosom the next. Ingram's eye twitches as he flashes a smile notable for its extraordinary absence of teeth. Aye. Magran learns us poor bastards that a little excitement's good for the heart. Um. Even the gods can't break me, Ingram. Some others might think that blasphemy. But when Magran hears it, Captain, oh, she knows you're filled with a fire. The eyes grow wide in excitement. Can we go back on the ship now? Bella rocks back on the heels of her feet, watching you both. Uh, shouldn't you be helping? Oh, but I am, Captain. I pray for the dent to test ourselves anew against the pirates. We'll nay let them slip away a second time. Bella, don't let Ingram be a bad influence while I'm gone. That's unkind. You're the one decided to pluck this wean from the wild of Air Glanforth. Blame that stone steward of yours for bringing the furry maid along. Uncle Engram, you promised me ale. Later, sweetie. Uncle Engram's thirsty too. He absentmindedly taps on his chest near his heart, sounding the thunk of something metal beneath the priest's jacket. Guessing they're gonna be oh loot. No. Fall back. Ah, shot this again. <laughs> Summon the dudes. Mind the boars, watcher. I can't hold them back. I fear, I fear. 
I'm here. I shall. It is good to see you well, Watcher. I believe the boars were hoping for easy meat. Budapek greets you with a relieved nod and checks the pistol at his hip. The bosun, Beodal, is in that cave over there. Ran in after a boar. Stubborn old dwarf. So why are you out here? I was able to calm one of the boars with a spell. For a time, at least. By the time I was through, I had lost sight of Beodal. I remained here, hoping he would return quickly. He has not. What happened? After we made landfall, you mean? I woke and Beodal was close by, swearing fit to bring Andra's wrath upon us a second time. We began to search for supplies. I came over this way in hopes of gathering some of that blood moss over there. I thought it might be of use. I imagine the boars had the same idea. I'll look for Beodal. I will make for the campfire. I must get this pistol cleaned if it's going to be of any use. Be careful in there, Captain. I saved his life. At least he could join my party for a little while or something. My goodness. I see, Turtle. Oh, well, dark in here. Press the button in the lower center of the screen or use Alt key to have select the characters enter or exit stealth. You have found an ingredient. Ingredients can be used to enchant unique weapons, armor, and shields, as well as to craft food, scrolls, and potions, and other items. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff. I can't craft anything. The better part of valor. Kind of dark in here. I guess we're not the first to head this way. Cannon shot. Look on the ground. Oh, you know what? That that torch, I bet, would be pretty useful. Trouble up ahead. We got here. Cave beetle. You. When it when a character in stealth enters the hearing radius or vision cone of a bystander, the bystander will start to detect them. The rate of detection is determined by the character's stealth skill and the level of the bystander, and it is faster in the vision cone than in the hearing radius. You can. Hover your cursor over any character while in stealth to see their hearing radius and vision cone. Some items, such as noisemakers, can be used to distract and move bystanders while you explore in stealth. Okay. Oh. Summon some skeletons. Apparently I'm out of that. Admiring my outfit. Keep it down. Indeed.
Let's keep on moving. Oh. A skeleton. With relish. Yes? I shall. Oh, you just I'm here. One shot the guy. Indeed. Let's keep quiet. I'll take care of this. We change the party formation here. I don't know why I'm in the front. I want to, like, I desperately, desperately want to press base bar to loot everything. Whoa! You see that? Traps and other hidden items can be discovered. While exploring, a character's ability to discover hidden items is tied to their perception, and their ability to disarm a detected trap is based on their mechanic skill. Any character, including enemies, can trigger a trap. Once activated, traps can cause or traps cause injuries to any characters hit by them. Damned pirates! Andra, take your scabrous souls for fish food. Bayadol. Still alive and calling everybody Scabrous, I see. Well, now we got a bosun. Just need a boat. Adair! And I see that corpse we've been carting around is looking a slight more sprightly. Good to see the two of you, but mind your step. I've got myself in a spot of trouble. Then try to find a way past without losing a leg or getting a face full of poison. Hmm. That's perception. That's mechanics. Hmm, that's kind of mean. So, uh, we're gonna set up the traps with some stones. So what is this? Light of hand. You wreak havoc upon the traps, traps to the tune of snapping metal teeth and clattering darts. When the cacophony is ended, Beodol peers out from between his fingers and gives you a broad grin. Clever, that. Though, no. it's a good thing none of them were of the exploding variety. Eld Ingram would have gotten a kick out of that, I bet. It's just bats and stinking corpses in this cave. You find anyone else? He gingerly sets his weight on his injured foot, grimacing. We've got a campfire going on the beach. Then I'll head that way myself. See you on the beach, Captain. Play something? Sarmat? I'm here, of course. Would you look at that? Not just time to wish to trigger it. Yes. Uh. Ah. What a jerk. Um the better part of valor. Is it I for inventory? It is. We got some medium armor here. 
basically exactly the same as my mail armor. Yep, basically exactly the same. Probably swap weapon sets here. We're about to fight this guy. Certainly. Right. Summon skeletons. Oriole. One of your characters has been engaged in melee. If an engaged character moves away from the character engaging them, they will provoke a dis disengagement attack. An, inter an interrupt, such as the fighter's knockdown, can break engagement to allow a safe exit. Some abilities, such as the rogue's escape, allow a character to get away without provoking a disengagement attack. Get him, my little skeletons! <laughs> Um, all right, if I'm going to, if I'm going to be a summoner, I cannot have that. Be more careful. Can I see HP? I want to see HP. Your face. X. Do that. <laughs> no. I thought there would be something that allows me to automatically see HP on enemies without clicking on them, but... That's fine, I guess. What's a metal killing machine doing out here by himself in a cave anyway? Your character has earned enough experience to advance a level. Click on the icon on their portrait to level them up. Collecting his thoughts? What? You didn't drop anything? Okay. So, one active skill and one passive skill. I don't know if I like sleight of hand. I think I might go Arcana. And passive skill. Probably going to go with diplomacy. I can get one new ability. The Cost three phrases. That's a lot. I 
I don't think I'm gonna have enough phrases to be summoning things and doing a lot of this stuff. Maybe I'll go for the passive option here. We'll go with this one. I like that one. All right, sounds good. Uh, you can now empower your abilities yourself. Once per fight, you can use Empower on an active ability to make it much stronger. Alternatively, you can use Empower on yourself to replenish a portion of your ability resources. To empower an ability, click on that in your action bar and then select the ability you want to empower. To restore resources, click on that and then click your uh, character's portrait or selection circle. You can only use Empower once per fight and a limited number of times between rests. Resting at an inn or using food or drink while resting at other locations will restore all of your characters and power points. Level you up. Let's keep boosting up your survival. I like the sound of that. Um... Explosive sounds pretty blah, so let's give you athletics. Alright, so you need to be level 3 for that, so let's give you that. Wind Barrage. Lip two. Admiring my outfit, I shot. That R looks about as good as it's. Well, that's going to be hard to clean. Wow. Wow! Oh, wow! Well, wow! Okay, so I can use scrolls. So we should probably equip that amazing ring on myself because I'm the most important person. Go this way. Uh, summon skeletons here. Get um. Get him, my pretties. <laughs> oh wow. a lot of loot of course um my chance Let's let's do that. I guess actually I didn't go over here. I know I'm incredibly annoying. Keeping an eye out. Skeletons. I hope nobody saw that. Charge, tree, tree. A 
Feel a Oriel. Feeding creatures will progressively unlock their entries in the bestiary. If you unlock more information in the bestiary, you'll be rewarded more experience. Hey, cool. Kill it. of mine is not quite far enough away all right so we've reached back to the beginning what a great dungeon short and sweet there is Take your word for it. All right, I think we've looted everything. There a map? I'll boil up some water. We'll have a spy at that leg of yours. Should have seen me with that barrel, Angrin. I showed it was boss. Hmm. Magrin gives some of us simpler trials than others. What a mess. We'll be needing help getting the Defiant off the ground. Uh, do you know anything about this place? We got turned around in that storm. Hard to be sure just where we are. Uh, what do we do now? I don't, I don't like that answer, but I'm gonna ask it. Or, I'm gonna, I don't like that question, but I'm gonna ask it. Not much chance of us moving the ship on our own, but we're in charted waters. There's bound to be a town nearby. They warned me strange things would come following you, Watcher. Good news, Captain. I found some supplies must have washed ashore. Even better. I've located some spirits. The mundane kind, I mean. Nothing that requires your talents, Watcher. Eyes twitch and twinkle in delight. Have you seen any other survivors? Not a one. We've come away from this one limping, Captain. But we live to see the next battle through. You know anything about this island? Kethrev here. I can that much. Means we're a sight better off than we could be. Of course, it's surely pirate territory. They have a number of bolt holes out this way. I'd nay be surprised if that cave up north is one of them. Could be they lie in wait for us even as we speak. Twinkle in his eyes belies his foreboding tone. And what do you think we should do now? It's just the lot of us now, Captain. You'd best head into town, see about supplies and repairs. I'll keep an eye on the ship. The Yodel said you had to bail him out of trouble. Diverus? Was he crying? You can tell me. Oh, quiet. You were under a damned barrel. <laughs> huh? Clicking on the world map will have your party navigate to the selected location. 
toggle on off the camera automatically following the party click the follow camera op on option on the bottom right In the distance, you see a simple wagon. The angle at which it rests on the road, one side jutting above the other, suggests that it's been damaged or disabled. Even from your vantage, you can make out Kith milling around it. Let's sneak closer to observe. As you near the cart, you make out a group of Redisaran pilgrims in, a rough spun, in rough spun linens and cottons. A single drapped horse stamps at the ground impatiently as two of the pilgrims argue over the front of the right wheel, which seems hopelessly stuck in the mud. Uh, approach openly. One of the pilgrims notices you. Her step back draws the attention of the others, and a man in well-worn gamesen steps forward. The weight of deep concern hangs on his face. Did the dreams bring you here as well? The other pilgrims look at you with a mix of apprehension and hope. Let's lie. No, just, let's just lie. Of course, why else? The older pilgrim's mouth opens in amazement. You hear a gasp from another. They look at each other, excitement from the eyes. Praise him, the old man cries out. We are not alone. We had the dreams too. We saw the three stars sailing through the sky, piercing the black of a storm cloud. Figured it must be him, Eothis, calling to us. So we came here to a place we saw in our dreams. The pilgrims look around, matching their sleeping memory to the present. We saw the giant pass with three stars on his brow, but he sighs and gestures to the wagon stuck in the mud. Sad to say we could not follow him. Wheel stuck as or wheel stuck as stuck gets. None of us are strong enough to lift that corner up to get something under it. More than one of us trot more than one of us tries and we get in each other's way. The other pilgrims nod and stretch, suddenly remembering their aching bodies. Timothy uh, let's inspect the wagon. Let me take a look. A brief inspection reveals that the wagon is undamaged, but the wheel is stuck fast in the mud. We have some wood, the old man says as he gestures to the back of the wagon. We can get the wheel up. We can slide that neath it. Inside the wagon, you see several planks of wood. A small box of valuables sits to the side. One of the younger dawn stars looks at you, eyes wide. Reckon you can lift it? Uh, let's attempt to lift the corner of the wagon. Edder squares himself to the wagon's corner and squats deep and rests the wheel up from the mud with a grunt. A young Donstar stands in shock for a moment, reacting just in time to thrust a thick board beneath the wheel. It takes the better part of an hour to lay down a safe path for the wagon to roll free of the mud. The laboring dawn stars glisten with sweat but laugh happily as they sing songs of praise for Eothis. I don't... I don't... know what's going on. Uh, minor positive, woo! Uh, two hours past. Smiling, their leader presses a small pouch of coin in your hand. We appreciate the help. Without you, who knows how long we would have been stranded out here. They begin to prepare the wagons as you take your leave. Silver Fenning. Old man calls out as you go. Take care of yourself and your soul, traveler. Whether you came for Eothis or not, we know in our hearts that he has come for us. Oh, we got here. 
Um, is F5? Yes, it is. Over here. Seems like there's a fight. Thick woodlands spread to the east of Port Maje. Maji. Slowing your travel. Birds flitter above you and insects drone incessantly. The path eventually gives way to a game trail, then no path at all. You find a curiously marked tree, the bark gouged away in a pattern. Striations seem to run upward from right to left, just shy of vertical. Let's examine the markings. Edder examines the gashes in the wood, then plucks out a tuft of hair from the side of the tree. Wild Boar did this. Edder taps the tree. Look at this. A sigil has been lightly carved into the wood, so faint that it is almost imperceptible. Continue cautiously forward. You press carefully into the forest, your clothes damp with humidity and the water dripping from the trees above. A quiet rustling from the underbush draws your attention northward, deeper into the forest. Uh, let's try to hide in the undergrowth. You duck down in the undergrowth, only to knock loose a log that has been leaned against a tree. You watch helplessly as it falls over, dragging behind a vine wrapped around a dead branch. The dead foliage crashes loudly to the ground. The sound approaches, and a tall Aumawa appears through the vegetation. Matted hair, red hair frames his head, while boar hides drape his form. Stranger still, several boar, several wild boar attend him. Their hackles up as their hackles up as they snort at you. What's a hackle? So many words I'm not gonna get and understand in this game. Better perks up at the side of the boars, alternatively imitating their grunts and chuckling. Only at length, in what appears to be a heel-dragging afterthought, does his attention at last turn to the strange man in their midst. Dirt darkens the folds of the man's skin. His lips curl over jagged teeth. He waves the stick at you. No, never talk. Just go. Leave this forest. Go leave these islands. Go return from where you've been. His Edirin is halting, the language thick in his mouth. Okay, so that's what those mean. Hmm. Let's go one. Uh, I mean you no harm. Can't we just talk? Said as if a word never hurts a person. You go. Speak quickly, then. Your words disturb this place. Uh, look, I just want to pass through this forest. No, your sort always want. This forest is not yours. This land is not yours. Go, leave. That's not going to work. Uh, but I, I guess I'll, I'll use it. I'm hunting a god. If I fail, your islands will not be spared his wrath. The man frowns, then pulls a leather-wrapped pouch from within his belongings. Hand shaking, he hands it to you. You have received item, wise teeth necklace. I was put in your stash. Then go, take this. They protect you if you speak true. They tear out your throat if no. He dismisses you with a wave. Did I win? <laughs> uh, plus one intellect. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, we got a hat. Take that hat. You can have a hat too. Well, isn't this brilliant? Quick save. What do you need? I got it. Hey. 
Always wanting more. I've given you what you asked for. You go now. That means I can continue? He didn't attack me, so... Take that. Victory is mine. Old Battleground. The sight of a recent battle spreads before you. The bodies of, routed, of the routed four still lie where they fell, though most have been picked clean by scavenging beasts. We search. Take time to explore the battlefield. You find a weapon in better shape than you would have expected. You get a spear. Keep searching. Keep searching. Find... I think that's supposed to be find. Find some armor that's still in remarkably good condition. Keep searching. Keep searching. Keep searching. Money amount sort of coins. Nothing left of any value. And let's let's go to town. Actually, we got a spear here. It's one-handed. The seven, seventeen to twenty-four, not better. Oh well, 